The year is 1964. AMC makes an all-new six-cylinder engine to replace the 195.6, also known as the 196, which had its own engine episode and won't be covered in this engine episode because of how different that engine family is to this engine family. But a quick recap on the 195.6 engine. It was a flathead design made for Nash Motors. It was the economy engine. Nash and Hudson merged in 1954 to become AMC. Instead of making an all new engine design, which would cost a ton of money, AMC just decided to add overhead valve to the existing flathead design. The flathead design was just about bulletproof. The 196 overhead version required maintenance and upkeep to head bolts. The head bolts like the loosen and had to be retorked from time to time. By 1964, that engine was getting kind of long in the tooth. It was time for a change. This engine family is often referred to as AMC's modern era in line six. This engine featured short stroke overhead valve configuration with two valves per cylinder. The layout was generously over square with 4.38 bore spacing, which also allowed plenty of coolant circulation. Fully counterweighted crankshaft with seven main bearings. This engine family was produced from 1964 through 2006, outliving AMC as a brand being produced by Chrysler after the purchase of AMC. In this episode, we will cover the 232, 199, 252, 258, 282, and 242 engines. It's important to note that this is just an engine overview episode. Born stroke sizes may be rounded. Also, we are only going from base horsepower to max horsepower. We're not getting into all of the horsepower figures for each year. Otherwise, we'd be here literally all day. Introduced in 1964, 232 cubic inch displacement in line six, 3.8 liters. It's good for anywhere between 100 to 155 horsepower, 3,600 RPM, 215 pound feet, or 292 newton meters at 1600 rpm with a bore of 3.75 inches and a stroke of three and a half inches compression is 8.5 to 1 seven main bearings the years this engine was used was between 1964 clear out to 1979 this was the base engine for most models it was also used in the cj5 from 1971 through 1975 Introduced one year later in 1965, 199 cubic inch displacement overhead valve, inline six, 3.3 liters. It's good for 128 horsepower at 4,400 RPM, 182 pound feet, or 247 Newton meters at 2,200 RPM with a bore of 3.75 inches in a stroke of three inches. Compression was eight and a half to one. Years this engine was used was between 1965 through 1970. It could be found in the 1965 through 66 Rambler Classic, the Fleet Cars, AMC Hornet in 1970, AMC Gremlin in 1970, the American from 1965 through 1969, among many other cars. Introduced in 1969, 252 cubic inch displacement in line six, 4.1 liters. This engine, we did not get here in the US. It was produced by AMC, Mexican subsidiary VAM. It was good for 170 horsepower at 4,600 RPM, 240 pound feet or 325 Newton meters at 2300 RPM with a bore of 3.91 inches and a stroke of 3.5 inches. Compression was nine and a half to one. It could be found in the VAM Javelin from 1969 through 1970 or Rambler Classic from 1970 amongst many other cars. The years this engine was used was between 1969 through 1972. The 232 shared the same deck height with the 199. In 1971, AMC would raise the deck height to make displacement 258 cubic inch displacement. The 232 adopted the 199 longer connecting rods so they could use the same block for both the 232 and the 258. The 199 was discontinued. 
Introduce the 1971 258 cubic inch displacement overhead valve in line 6 4.2 liters. It's good for anywhere around 150 horsepower at 4400 RPM, 240 pound feet, or 325 newton meters at 1600 RPM with a bore of 3.75 inches and a stroke of 3.895 inches. Compression was 8 to 1. Years this engine was used was anywhere between 1971 through 1990. It could be found in the 1971 through 1988 Hornet, Commodore, Pacer from 1975 through 1980, amongst many, amongst many others. It's also important to note that this engine also saw use in farm and agricultural purposes. Also introduced in 1971, but this is another engine for the VAM, which we did not get here in the States. 282 cubic inch displacement in line 6, 4.6 liters. It's good for anywhere between 129 to 200 horsepower, 4,400 RPM, 216 to 280 pound feet, up to 380 Newton meters at 2,200 RPM. With a bore of 3.917 inches and a stroke of 3.895 inches, compression could be anywhere between 7.7 .7 to 9.5 to 1. Years this engine was used was between 1971 through 1986. It could be found in the VAM Javelin 1971 through 1973 or from 1974 through 1976 in the classic AMX. Introduced in 1986 for the 1987 model year and this was the final evolution of the 258-6. This was one of four engines Chrysler still used after they bought AMC in 1987. This engine was known as the king of Jeep engines because of its reliability and engine longevity. This engine is said to go for two or maybe even so much as 300,000 miles, which is absolutely insane. 242 cubic inch displacement overhead valve in line six, four liters. It's good for anywhere between 180 to 190 horsepower at 4750 RPM, 220 pound feet or 298 Newton meters at 4,000 RPM with a bore of 3.875 inches and a stroke of 3.414 inches. Compression is 8.8 .8 to one. This engine weighs 483 pounds dry. It's only one pound heavier than all of the rest of the engines featured on this episode. Years this engine was used was from 1986 for the 1987 model year to the year 2006. It could be found in the Cherokee and the YJ Wrangler among other vehicles. Chrysler would replace the 4-liter engine as well as bring in an all-new JK Jeep Wrangler for the 2007 model year. The 4-liter would be replaced by a 3.8-liter V6, which was also found in Chrysler minivans. But that's honestly another engine for another day. Would you rather, two scenarios today, in the first scenario, would you rather have a 1971 Jeep CJ5 or... 1988 AMC Eagle or 1991 Grand Cherokee. I'm going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free. Pause the video. Moving on to the second scenario, 1975 AMC Pacer or 1973 AMC Gremlin or 1971 AMC Hornet. Once again, going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free. Pause the video. Now it's time for Name That Tune. First person to get both the name of the band and the song title correctly in the comment section will have their comment pinned to the top of it. Your hint for that song. That song is from 2003. Hard to believe that it was 20 years ago, but... That's what it was. Thank you all so much for coming out and watching this. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below. I read and answer all comments posted, and I don't say that for self-worth. I just say that if you leave a comment, I will definitely read it. We also have a Facebook group that correlates with this YouTube channel. If you love cars and uh, maybe you have cars and you want to show your cars, stories, experiences, anything car-related is shareable there. 
If you don't have Facebook and would still like to reach me, send me an email. All of it will be linked in the description below. Just know I appreciate everything that you guys bring in the comment section. Also, really cool announcement. We are doing our very first segment of Part of the Conversation. It's going to be Tuesday the 23rd at 11 a.m. with Wild Bill over there at Vintage Car History. This is going to be like a podcast, but it's going to be a live podcast where anybody that's in the comment section could ask a question and have it answered in real time. I believe the topic for discussion is entry-level classic car. So it will make everybody that is present watching the live show part of the conversation. We're going to try to do one a month with various people in the automotive sector. If you'd like to be part of it, message me either through email or Facebook, which both of them will be linked in the description below. Just know I appreciate everything that you guys bring. And until next time, toodaloo!